Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how to weave the seat of a chair. Here's the cane that I'm using. It's 3 millimeter and 250 feet. This should be enough to cane one chair. I have pre-soaking the cane and I'm weighting it down with a couple of my butter knives and it needs to soak between 20 and 30 minutes. Now again I want to point out that the cane has one smooth shiny side and an interior side that is rough and when we're working the cane the smooth side is always exposed. Now when you're getting ready to start your weaving of the or caning of the seat Okay, you want to take note of the distances between the front and the back. Um, the back is narrower than the front. And if you count the holes, this has 16 holes. So I come in from this side, 8, and I'm marking the center. Well, center is between the two holes. And then on this side, there's 18. So I counted 9 in and marked my peg. Okay, now when you start the caning, you want to start from the center and you're going to work to the side. Okay, my caning has already been soaked and um, it's been in about 20 minutes. And what you want to do is leave about uh, four or so inches sticking down through, and then you want to take one of your tapered pins and lock it in. Okay, now we do the same with this on this one and again the smooth side is going to be up on all of these. So we pull our cane through I'm pulling through the hole number nine on this uh, front one we're going to do this in a pattern. Okay, you don't want to pull this too tight because it will shrink and we need it just a tad so it will flex when we're doing the weave. <clears throat> okay, now after it's through, okay, what we're going to do is come across to the hole beside it, come up and back to here and we'll continue that through the whole weave <clears throat> on the front section. So we're going to put down a layer uh, all the uh, strings running in one direction. And it's not really uh, weaving yet until we get about to our fourth crisscross row and that will be the very first row that we we begin to do our weaving. Okay, we got that one up through. I made sure that it didn't twist underneath. Okay, and I'm using that pin to hold it for me. That's my third hand. And then we go down through this one. Now we come up through the hole here. And each time <clears throat> that I do this, I make sure that the cane doesn't twist on me and that the smooth or shiny side is going to be up. And as I'm progressing, I can just follow with that peg. Okay, when <clears throat> you get to the end, um, the next cane, we have to make sure that it will be parallel. So, you may have to come up through one of these other holes. So if that's equal distance, which it does look pretty close, we can use that hole. 
and notice I'm twisting that so that the smooth side was up. Okay, this is going to end this one run. And I have, looks like about nine inches of cane. I'm just going to leave that bit hang below. And that'll be trimmed, knotted and trimmed later. Okay, now we start with the next cane. We'll start right here. And we'll also be using to hold it with another pin. Now, when I go and get the next cane, I'm going to be needing more, so I'll add new cane and I'll stick it to the bot in the pot. I'll add new cane to the, the pot that I have the cane soaking in, and I'll make sure that I put that cane, the new one, at the bottom so that that one will have its 20 minutes of soaking by the time I get to it. Okay, the next cane will start the same way. I'm putting about four to six inches of cane through the hole. And now I'll need a second set of pins to be following this one. Now we're going to run a pattern across this. Uh, this is the vertical, this is the horizontal. So th with this one we can just start at the front edge and work our way back. Um, or vice versa, start at the back, work forward. Okay, we're going to start here, and again, we're going to leave four to six inches protrude down through. And I ran out of my tapered wedges, so in a pinch, these don't hold as good. I'm using a golf tee, and uh, they'll have to make do. When you get to the last uh, str strand and uh, you have this excess cable or cane, you want to trim that cane off to about four to six inches. And then we start on what we have right now is running vertical, running horizontal. Now we want to do one more vertical and repeat the same order again. So uh, you can start in the middle or you can start at the end since you already know how the pattern's going to go. So I'm going to use this same pin and start in the middle again. So I'm holding that so it doesn't slip out. There's not any tension on it. And I'll push in four to six inches and pin it. Okay, as the, the holes fill up, it gets a little tighter. So uh, then the golf tees hold a little bit better um, as they're getting more cane into the holes. Give a smaller hole then. Okay, now we follow the same line and uh, smooth side is always up and we just start repeating this same process and you don't need to worry about it being uh, to the side you just leave it go over top as I have it right here and the w real weaving doesn't really start until we do the next horizontal row. Okay, now that we've made the third run, we can get rid of some of the pegs and we can now tie off some of the ends. And I'll show you how you make the knot and tie the ends off. 
after turning the chair over we're going to work on getting rid of these so to tie the knot I'm going to come underneath to make a loop and if it's too tight you can use a awl to open up to give you room for the knot and this is why you needed that four to six inch make a loop pull out the snap the slack push this back through take that loop snug it up and pull out all the excess and leave this point inward uh, if it points outward it could get sloppy when you handle the chair you might feel those ends and then you can snip this off and I usually do it right at the edge of the the wood and let's do it again right here I'm going to push this pin out okay we make a loop on the inside right here come underneath this reed that's cross and that's why you have to wait you need to get a few of these to cross so that you have something to make your knot with making a loop that's in our way making a loop come through that loop pull that slack out then make the knot sniff off the excess okay now that we have three runs we have two vertical and one horizontal we're going to start the actual weave and I'm going to start at this front edge and these top reeds I'm going to kick them all to my right like this to open to expose the uh, the vertical runs and what I'll do then is come up through like this and push the top one to my right when you get about four I got five here it's pretty tight so you're going to have to pull the slack out just like you uh, went through each individual hole you have to pull the cane all the way through okay now I'm going to need about four to six inches to push down through this first hole and with that okay slack out so bring this through as you're weaving you want to make sure that you keep your cane moist um, you can use a, a mister bottle or I take a damp cloth and lay over the cane to help keep it wet okay now weaving again pushing the top one to my right come up over that one and then down to the bottom okay now that's going to go down through this hole so if you look at the pattern you have two verticals, two horizontals and they do make special tools for this for gathering up and I have here a piece of bamboo that uh, the cane can slide into push that through that just is an aid for your finger
Okay, the first weaving is done. The verticals and horizontals are interlaced. Next, you want to close up and straighten all these lines and uh, just nudge them and try to tighten the joints up where they cross and this is getting preparation for the diagonal weave and the diagonal is going to go through the larger holes. Now we're going to do the diagonal weave. Um, a lot of times people just finish uh, their weaving with this pattern um, but to match the other chair, the existing pattern, it has diagonal weaves. So we're going to do the di diagonal weaves. We're starting in the back left hand corner and again we're going to leave about six inches into the hole. And here is where the holes are getting filled so this is where the golf tees help. They're thinner and they can go through that hole. Over the horizontal, this is the horizontal, we're going over the horizontal and then here's the vertical, we're going under the vertical. You see where I'm coming up there. Okay, over the horizontal, and then under the vertical. Here's the last one over the horizontal, under the vertical. And the horizontal and vertical, they're sets, they're pairs. That's what we're going over and under. Okay, once we get that first diagonal run, okay, we go through that hole right there. And we come up to the hole beside it. I need to mention that as you're working you need to keep misting this to keep it damp. And the same with the uh, ones you're ready to use, the canes, I keep them in a damp cloth. Okay now the diagonal this way is done. Now we need to do the opposite direction. Now we were going under the vertical and over the horizontal. We're going to do just the opposite. Under the horizontal and over the vertical. Okay, we're going to start from a corner. And I'm not using real long uh, canes through the diagonal because of the weaving it makes it a lot easier to do it this way uh, with shorter. So we'll start it here. Now we went the last time we were going under the vertical so we're going to go under the horizontal and then over the vertical. So. Here's the vertical. We're going over the vertical. And here underneath the horizontal. And the first one is the one that you have to pay real close attention to because it's setting it up, setting the diagonal up, 
Okay, I'm going to do a second run here. The first one's in. And we're going to start here. Okay, again, over the vertical, under the horizontal. Once you finish the diagonal uh, caning or weaving, you're going to put a binder over the holes and this will dress up the seat. And you can see the size difference between the uh, cane that was woven and the binder. The binder is thicker. Okay, now when you start this, you start at the back and you go and stick one end into a hole and you bend it down. That's going to be held with the caning. Okay, now we're going to start with pushing the cane down through, leaving about six inches to tie a knot and you push this down on the other side and pull that through. Now you're going to need to be able to see both sides and the reason for that is so that you can see just what you're doing with this. Okay, now when I flip it over, you can see here, <clears throat> here's the beginning end, and I need to have more for a knot. Okay, now we secure a knot, and we tie the knot just the way we tied all the caning knots. And then we go back to the hole adjacent and the holes are going to be, some of the holes are going to be real tight and you will probably need to open some of the holes up with the uh, awl. Okay, that one's pushed. We draw it down through. And you can see here, got to make sure that the smooth side is up. We wrap that binder. Make sure that the binder is held flat. Don't let it turn. And work this all the way up to the corner. When you hit the corner, you're going to have to bend the binder. It will bend in the corner. When you're getting to the end of this border, and how I started, I bent this and stuck it down into the hole and what I'll do is when it comes around and uh, meets the other side I'll do the exact same thing. Cut that off and bend this Okay, now I'll come up through the side and back down and uh, cover it with a tie and that's going to require flipping it.
Here's the cane seat, day after, or drying overnight, about as tight as a drum head as it dried. Okay, now the color I need to uh, try to match, and this is the chair that uh, we're trying to match. So the caning on that chair was stained along with the chair, so I'm going to do a staining on this and see how it will turn out. You can see here the color match pretty close. I put a dark walnut on first and then I hit it after I brushed it, wiped it off. I brushed on a maple and it's a pretty good color, pretty close match. Well, thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.